I used to think building muscle meant lifting as heavy as possible, six days a week, eating every two hours, and taking every supplement that I could get my grubby paws on. But the truth is, most people overcomplicate muscle building so much. It really comes down to a few core principles. Think of it kind of like baking a cake. You have your main ingredients, and then you can put a cherry on top if you want it to look that extra bit better. Once you understand how it all works, muscle becomes a lot easier to build. Let's kick things off with our ingredients. The three essential things that you need to have in place if you want to make long-term gains. First, training. Before we dive into all the training advice, it's important that we answer one key question. How does muscle actually grow? By understanding the fundamentals of muscle growth, you'll see exactly why we train in the ways that I'm about to show you and how each method supports real tangible results. One answer you probably heard before is that lifting weights creates tiny micro tears in your muscles. And these micro tears repair and adapt when you're not training, allowing you to become bigger and stronger over time. But this doesn't actually seem to be the case. The term micro tears implies structural damage within the muscle fibers themselves. So this is something that's neither necessary or consistently observed in muscle hypertrophy. For example, Damas and colleagues found that muscle damaged evidence by soreness or reduced function didn't correlate well with long-term muscle growth. Muscle growth and muscle damage seemed like completely independent processes. So if it's not micro tears, what is it? Well, Schoenfeld clearly explained that muscle hypertrophy mainly occurs from mechanical tension placed upon the muscle fibers. And that hypertrophy can and does occur in the absence of significant muscle fiber damage. When you lift weights or perform resistant exercise, the muscle fibers experience tension that activates signaling pathways within the cells. These pathways then stimulate muscle protein synthesis, which is the process of muscle making more proteins, ultimately causing the muscle to become bigger and stronger over time. So although muscle soreness and damage can and does occur, it's not necessary in order for the muscle to grow. So how do we train to cause mechanical tension and muscle growth? Based on what we know from the research, our training really needs to follow four key principles of hypertrophy. First, exercise selection. In order to grow our muscles, we can't just pick the exercises that we think look the coolest. We need to pick the ones that load the muscle in a way that aligns with their natural movement patterns and leverages them or positions them in a way that loads them as effectively as possible. Without diving too deeply into the biomechanics today, here is a roadmap that you can use to pick exercises based on each muscle group's everyday function. That way, you'll naturally choose movements that work with, not against, your body's design. Second, programming. Once you know what exercises you're going to use, the next step is programming them into a consistent routine. There are tons of splits floating around online. We've got upper-lower, push-pull legs, full body. And while some might look more optimal on paper, the one that is going to be best for you is one that slots into your lifestyle and that you can stick to in the long run. According to research, training a muscle two to three times a week is often seen as the most beneficial for muscle hypertrophy, provided that you space these sessions around 48 hours apart in order to let muscle protein synthesis return back to baseline. So here's how to choose your ideal split. If you can only train three days a week, a full body approach is probably ideal. If you can train four, then upper lower is probably going to be best for you. Or if you like five or six days, then push pull legs will allow for more frequent sessions. The key is to pick a structure that you actually enjoy and will stick to for months or years, not just weeks. Third, volume. Once you know your split and you can train a muscle a couple times a week, we need to know how many sets we're doing. While more sets typically boost muscle growth, studies do show a point of diminishing returns. Meaning, going from 1 to 5 sets will help grow more muscle, but going from 5 to 20 won't necessarily make you see quadruple the gains. For this reason, aim for around 5 to 10 sets per muscle group to start. Go closer to 10 for muscle groups you really want to prioritize or those that you're training at shorter lengths. With exercises such as the leg extension or the hip thrust or a glute kickback because these are exercises that are easier for your body to recover from. Space those sets out for each muscle group between two or three sessions, not just into one marathon workout so we can keep our sets as high quality as possible. Practically, if you're starting at around five to 10 sets per week, pick one to three exercises per muscle group doing around one to three sets each and keep total exercises per session at around four to six so you can put real effort into each one. These are guidelines, not rules. If you feel completely wiped out, maybe reduce a set a little bit or pick less taxing exercises. If you're barely progressing and nailing everything else, all your other variables, then you can add a set. The goal is balance, enough volume to spur growth without burning yourself out. Fourth, exercise intensity and progressive overload. After we've picked our exercises, dialed in our split and nailed our volume, it's time to make sure each set is actually challenging enough to grow and to continue growing over time. This is where intensity and progressive overload 
would come in. First, let's cover intensity. This essentially covers how close you're pushing to failure, which is not being able to do another rep on a given exercise. Research suggests that stopping around one to two reps shy of failure can produce similar hypertrophy results as going all out and going straight to failure. While going to absolute failure may squeeze out a little bit of an advantage in muscle fiber recruitment, it also requires longer for your body to recover. The sweet spot really is to push your sets close, but not too absolute failure, allowing you to tap into those high threshold fibers without running into chronic fatigue and letting you recover from your workouts more efficiently. But in saying this, you probably will need to push your sets to complete failure a few times just to know what one to two reps shy feels like, which is completely fine. And I promise the fatigue goblin won't come and get you for that. Secondly, progressive overload. Once your exercises split and volume are locked in, we need to make sure that we're actually making progress and continue to make this progress on a weekly basis. A lot of people force more reps or weight every single workout under the guise of progressive overload. But true overload is simply proof that your body has adapted to the stimulus you've given it and is now stronger and can do more. It's not something that can be forced on a strict timetable. A simple approach that I use to track it is to use a six to eight rep range on every exercise. To do this, first you need to pick a weight that you can do for around six reps, pushing one to two reps shy of failure. Second, focus on keeping your form solid and loading the target muscle and then keep all other conditions the same week to week. So things like your rest time between sets, how close you're pushing to failure and the weight you're using on a given exercise. Third, just let adaptation happen. You will find that after a week or two, you'll be able to do seven reps, eight reps while keeping everything else constant. Your body's just adapted naturally. It's not something that you needed to force or push. And once you hit eight reps with confidence, you can then increase the load. I recommend doing something like 2.5 kilos or five kilos to bring you back down to that six reps at one to two reps shy of failure and then restart the cycle. In other words, progressive overload isn't just adding more sets or forcing out sloppy reps every single session. It's a result of your muscles getting stronger from consistent quality training. Now onto our second ingredient nutrition. I know the training section was a lot to take in, so let's try and dial it in as much as possible here with our nutrition. First, how many calories do you need to eat and do you really need to count calories? Well, your daily calories will depend on what your specific goals are. If you want to stay roughly the same weight or maintain roughly the same body fat percentage, then just eat at maintenance. This can be figured out using an online calculator or just by tracking what you're eating on a daily basis right now and then using the scale to measure your weight over the next few weeks. If it stays the same, it's like likely that you're eating at maintenance. If it goes up, you're eating in a surplus, and if it goes down, you're eating in a deficit. Of course, using a scale like this will come with its fluctuations, say if you're gaining muscle or if you're on a certain part of your period cycle for women, but it will serve as a rough guide. Just watch the trend, and if it stays relatively consistent, you're probably eating at maintenance. If you want to lose fat, you should be in a slight deficit. Research has suggested that if your goal is to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time, then a deficit of around 500 calories is pretty much your limit if you don't want to blunt your muscle growth. But this will depend on your training age and what your starting body fat percentage is. Beginners can often get away with a lot more than advanced or already trained individuals. I have filmed multiple in-depth videos on fat loss and muscle gain though, so I'll link it here now. And I'll also put my fat loss guide in the description for all those who are interested in further guidance. Secondly, what are macros and do you need to track them? Macros is just a shorthand for the three major macronutrients found in foods. Protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Think of them as the main fuel types that your body uses to function and to build muscle. But do you need to track them? If your goal is to build muscle, I would recommend tracking your protein intake. It's suggested by research that eating anywhere between 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of your body weight is a good range to build muscle. But this, of course, will depend on things like your budget, if you're cutting, or even your current lean body mass levels. But anywhere really between the 0.8 to 1 gram range is perfect for muscle growth. As for carbs and fats, I really wouldn't worry too much much about it, just as long as you're hitting your minimum intake for fats, you'll be fine. Other nutrition details like meal timing, protein distribution between your meals, and pre or post workout nutrition are all secondary. The real foundation for muscle growth comes from consistently hitting your calorie goals and your protein goals on a daily basis. If you nail those, you're really going to be doing 99% of the work for muscle growth. All other tweaks are really icing on the cake once you have these basics absolutely locked in. And for our third and final ingredient, 
important we have consistency. No matter how perfect your plan is, it won't mean anything if you can't stick to it. For some people, consistent means doing one workout a week, and for other people, it means doing five. The key is to simply show up even when it's not perfect. One thing that I find that's really helped with my consistency is habit building. Schedule your workouts at specific times in your day, like appointments, and this way it will make them ingrained into your routine. And once it's routine, you don't even really need to think about it. It kind of just becomes something you do, like brushing your teeth, but with a barbell. Even if you just aim for 30 to 45 minutes three times a week, that is far better than planning two-hour sessions that you will never be able to stick to. And on those days you really don't feel like going, just tell yourself you'll go and do one exercise and then you can go home. Usually the hardest part of working out is thinking about the workout, not the actual workout itself. Once you get to the gym, you might want to do a few more exercises. And even if you don't, at least you showed up and you stuck to that routine and it'll keep the ball rolling and make it more likely that you can stay consistent in the long run. And finally, let's talk about our cherries on top. Those little finishing touches that can really push your results further once all of your essentials are in place. Specifically, I'm talking about sleep, cardio, and supplements. We'll keep it brief here since they are secondary to our essentials, but I just want you to get the gist of things. First, sleep. Aim for around seven to nine hours each night. But of course, this isn't realistic for a lot of people. So if you can't get seven to nine hours, just try and add an hour or two when you can, and you will notice a big difference in your recovery and your training overall. Having a night or two of poor sleep isn't make or break for muscle growth in the long run, but of course, consistent poor sleep will affect your muscle growth like it'll affect every other bodily process that's going on. Practicing good sleep hygiene, so going to sleep in a cold, dark room with no screens before bed may help you go to sleep faster and stay asleep for longer, leading to more quality night's rest in the long run. Secondly, cardio. Now you don't need cardio to build muscle and cardio also won't make you lose muscle if you're doing it correctly. Research has shown that trained individuals might experience a slight drop in their strength gains if they're doing cardio and their lifting sessions back to back. But if you space it out by a day or even just a few hours, you can largely avoid this interference effect that happens with strength doing them in the same session. For most beginners and intermediates, this effect is pretty minimal though, so you don't really need to worry about doing cardio in the same session as you're lifting. Even if it's just low impact forms like cycling or walking that are easier to recover from, I personally think that everyone should have some form of cardio in their routine. Not only will it give you an insane health benefit, but it also helps with things like digestion and your mental health. So for me, I would say cardio is something that you should definitely think about adding into your routine. And third, supplements. Honestly, these are completely optional. You do not need supplements in order to grow muscle they're special. Plenty of people, including myself, have built muscle without them. Prioritize your whole foods, protein, and a balanced diet first before diving into what optimized supplements you can take in order to improve your muscle growth. If you do want to take some supplements to fill in some gaps in your diet, look for third-party tested quality products. The most proven muscle building aids are protein powders and also creatine monohydrate. Beyond that, most supplements don't have any scientific backing and it even says on the little supplement container that these claims are not supported by the FDA, so it just makes your pee really expensive. Ultimately, building muscle isn't magic. It's about training effectively, eating enough calories and protein, and staying consistent in the long run. Don't worry if your progress isn't linear every single week. Stick to the basics, tweak when and as needed, play the long game, and if you do that, your gains will practically be guaranteed. You just need to be patient. Let me know down below if you guys found this video helpful, or if you have any other muscle building tips that you have found on your journey to help everyone else down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe while you're down there and join us pookies and hopefully I will catch you guys in my next one. Mom hiked broken!